Welcome to the Valve Studio. It's been quite some time since I've been behind the camera, but today I'm going to talk a little bit about my coil winder and the progress I've made in the last year. It's a project I call Faraday, and a lot of you have seen my video on it where I, I had access to a wood router and I made one out of wood, and that revealed to me that I really didn't know anything about mechanical design. Um, that thing wasn't very flexible. So I'm working on version number two right now, which is basically made out of extruded aluminum. And I'm going to show you some problems that I've come up, that I've run, run across. And the reason why I haven't done an update on this uh, recently, within the last year, is because uh, I decided to get a lot further along in the project um, before I release videos. Uh, this thing might take another nine months to get finished. But today I'm going to talk about the spindle motor that I just purchased. It's an integrated stepper servo motor from JMC Electronics in, um, in China. We'll go into an in-depth uh, an in-depth review of that and show you why it has superior performance over just a stepper solution or a gear stepper solution. All right, let's uh, move over to uh, my computer and I'll start showing you some stuff and then I'll move into the lab next door. We'll go ahead and show you this motor in action. Here's a version from nine months ago. It's made out of aluminum extrusion, 3D printed parts. The bobbin is fully supported on both sides. Here's a geared stepper motor running through a pulley system driving a eight millimeter linear shaft. I'm able to use various couplers to hook onto the shaft. Then I'm moving this entire spindle in X using another stepper motor back here through a pulley system. Back behind there, you can see an Arduino Nano, and it's on a really crappy CNC 3D axis, three axis controller. I've since thrown that in the trash. We've definitely made a lot of changes to this design in the nine months, which I'll outline here as well as in future videos. Let's move on to a couple of things on my computer, and then we'll go ahead and show you the motor. The first one here is I found a table of recommended wiring tensions. This is for winding coils. And we have copper and aluminum here. Um, and here we'll probably be, uh, the biggest transformer we'll ever do is 16 gauge. Um, we may get up to 43 if we want to do um, uh, guitar pickups. But let's go back down because the bigger the gauge, the higher the tension we need. So if we were to do 16 gauge, that is uh, 15 pounds, uh, a minimum and a maximum of 20 pounds. Uh, so if we were to come over here and look at the spindle, uh, typically the transformers that I'll be winding um, will be, the, the bobbin will be two inches in diameter. So that's going to be 16 pound inches. If we convert 16 pound inches to Newton meters, that's 1.8 Newton meters. Well, 16 pounds is 16 pounds, regardless of, of, of where it is. And this particular design for the Faraday using these linear rails that are unsupported is not gonna work because we're basically gonna put 16 pounds of tension on this spindle. And that's equivalent to about two gallons of milk um, or two gallons of water. That'll be about 14 pounds. And these things will actually torque this whole entire platform. So unsupported bearings aren't gonna work. So I ended up buying uh, two of these SBR uh, 10. These are linear bearings that are supported all the way across. I have those, so I'm gonna replace this design with these supported linear bearings. We'll go and hop over to the design now. Um, this is completely done in Onshape. If you were to look for a Faraday coil winder over at Onshape.com, you can see this because uh, this is a public document. And you can see my design here. And so I've been modeling all this over here. This is a 500 millimeter lift widths. And I'm using this, this motor here. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But it's, um, yeah, I've actually learned a lot about Onshape in terms of being able to have, you know, constraints and that kind of thing. And so some other things that are, are um, 
In here is I have a limit switch on the X axis and this is going to be my A axis. And I don't have everything in here yet, but I'm getting there. And if we come in here and look at the side of the spindle, you can see that I still have the 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 geared um, the the pulley system back here. And I also have uh, I bought some uh, Hall Effect counters, um, and so I have a. Um, a, the, I'll have another display for just the turns the turns count and we'll be able to put different size of bobbins on here I'll have uh, little fixtures made to hold different bobbin sizes all right well that's uh, the current design my the this particular design here uh, use 3d printed parts uh, something I've also been working on the last year is uh, a friend of mine runs a uh, machine shop, a high-end machine shop here in uh, where I live, and I have a, now access to a 3D mill. Uh, and so I'm going to actually mill these out of aluminum. This little plate here on my original design, I ended up putting a lot of torque on this plate, and this thing would actually bend, even though you know it's pretty well supported. It would I'd see a lot of flex in that. So I'm going to. On, on this design, this motor plate is actually made going to be made out of aluminum. All right, back to our problem. We need a motor solution that's going to, a spindle solution that's going to be able to put um, 1.8 newton meters onto my shaft. And that translates down to 16 pound inches. All right, well, I found this is a NEMA 24. Uh, NEMA 24 3 newton meter motor and it is from JMC it's called a IH660 HSS60 3620 36 oh, I can't get that number right well you can read it right here it's $84 and it was $33 in shipping I have that now and uh, this thing is fantastic motor it's an integrated stepper motor, so it has the motor driver built into the top. Uh, and it's going to, it requires that you run between 20 and 50 volts. And I'm going to run the, my motor, uh, my coil winder at 36 volts. It has a bunch of different settings over here. I want to go down. I want to show you some other things that it does. It does not lose any steps. That's the great thing. Um, because we'll show you that when we get over there it runs it it can it's capable of running at 100 percent rate of torque um and it does uh it does have user defined micro steps those those uh, switches on the side allow you to go from we'll show you another table here at the manufacturer site this is the manual from uh, just motion control this is a uh, a motor company in china and I've contacted them and they've been really helpful and fast in answering my, my questions. So we'll, we'll go down through here and we'll show you the, the it's, it's really a pretty well, well written manual. But those switch settings on the side, there's four dip switches for the micro stepping. And you can, it does, I think it, I think it defaults to doing 200 micro steps per revolution, 200 steps per revolution but the smallest step size you can have is 800. And the 800 down to this 5120 are, are double integral, double intervals of 200, but you can also have it run from a thousand up to 40,000. So 40,000, 40,000 steps per revolution. It's like crazy. Um, you couldn't run that off a gerbil board if you wanted to run that kind of resolution because, um, well, you could, but the motor, the RPM on the motor would be really small. Anyway, that's uh, that's for another day. Uh, let me see what else did I get. Oh, I got the linear rails. I showed you that already. Okay, uh, they mentioned also on this thing it has a serial port on it. And they talk about this thing in here. There's a little extra box. It's like a little dongle that you can plug into this. I'll go ahead and show you the dongle. Um, 
they'll give you that JMC motion control will give you one, but you got to pay for shipping, which is about twenty dollars. And that lets you change some other internal parameters. But I'm I'm going to run right off of what came in the box, no changing of anything. Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and go next door, and we'll show you this motor in action. Here's my motor test stand for today's video. I have the integrated step servo motor strapped down to a piece of wood. On the side here, there is a step table. You set, you set the step count, the micro stepping back here with these dip switches. I currently have it set for the default, which was 800 steps per revolution. I've got this little uh, magnetic counter hooked over on to this thing over here. You run a magnet near the head. I 3D printed a little arm and put some magnets on the side here. I've got this running off of a Gerbil board. I'm running Gerbil version 1.1, I think it's G. And this is a 24 volt, 1.7 amp power supply. It's running through an old analog ammeter so we can look at the current draw of the motor. So we will, uh, Oh, over here we also have a couple more items. This is the um, little extra box to change the settings inside the motor. You basically run a cable from the back side of that into this connector back over here and you can change some additional characteristics of the motor. Uh, the motor we're looking at today is what came to me with out of the box. It did not change any parameters with this uh, external device here. And to measure the torque, I have a luggage scale here that we can actually measure the torque. And down here, I've actually 3D printed some indexes. So this guy here is about an inch from the center. So we're going to measure how well this thing adheres to our being able to put 16 pounds at about an inch. All right, let me go ahead and attach the camera to a tripod and we'll get started. I got a universal G-code sender running here. And you can see that we're on uh, the Gerbil board re rebooted. So we'll go down here. We're going to reset our counter back to zero. And you notice that the shaft here is vertical. Got the feed rate at 10. And we are going to uh, step I have this actually on the y-axis for Gerbil, so I want to go around one. And you see that we went all the way around and we have a rotation of one. So we'll change the... Now what's interesting is the current draw over here is now I'm at a full scale of one amp and we are a little bit more than 200 milliamps. Now, I talked a little bit about that this is an integrated step servo. So this is actually powered right now. And you'll see that if I start putting a little torque on it, the current rises up. All right. And if I really torque it around a lot and I let go, it's going to go back to where it was on either direction. And it is fairly difficult to to turn this thing. We'll measure that here in just a minute. Actually, let's go measure it now. Let's see if I can turn this thing on. We're on pounds right now. You're not going to be able to see this, but I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to put the arm right here in the center of this, and then I'm going to pull down where the luggage goes. And I will pull it down to see kind of where this holding torque is. Uh, this is a pretty primitive way of doing it, but it's it's uh, it shows you that we do we actually are getting some performance. So I'm about an inch away from the center, as you can see. And remember, now we want 16 pounds right here. So I'm going to go down, and I'm at nine, twelve. I'm at 16 right there. Now what's interesting is that our current draw at 16 pounds is about 400 milliamps to hold it. 
All right. So this motor is going to work fine for our application. And our current draw is low, which means that uh, the Faraday coil winder doesn't need a very large power supply. I currently have a 36 volt, 3 amp power supply on there. And my motor is not going to draw more than maybe half an amp. All right, now let's talk a little bit about speed here. I have a Gerbil uh, set up so that the y-axis is at 2,500 millimeters per minute, which equates to, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how many rotations. It's all kind of confusing. But I'll go ahead and show you this thing actually running at a little higher rate. So let's go ahead and crank up the feed rate to 100. And we'll, we'll go ahead and run, run around by one. All right, so that's a feed rate of 100. And you can see our, 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 uh, our counter over here is actually going up. Well, that's not too interesting. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and go up by 100. So when we get done, we should be at 108. Should have kicked that up a notch, huh? <laughs> Uh, if I knew how to run Gerbil, I would kill this. Oh, we can just reset the board. Can we do that? Yeah, here we go. Let's just start over again. All right, so we will put our arm back so that zero is, is where we want it to be. So it's about there. And we'll reset our counter. And we'll reopen Gerbil and we'll, all right, so let's make sure everything's running right. We'll go around by one. All right, let's kick this up to 250 for the feed rate. All right, now we're talking. All right, so now we'll go up by 100. So when we're done, we should end at 103. You see our current went up here where it's running now. Uh, our holding current was about 500 milliamps to hold 16, uh, 16 inch pounds. But now at this rotational rate, we are now at about almost 600 milliamps. And we're gonna end up at 103. And there we are. All right, so let's go ahead and make it a little faster. We will make it 500. And we'll do another 100. And you'll notice we stopped counting. So either this particular counter is supposed to be able to handle 20,000 uh, 20, RPM. Um, but it's, it's clearly not. And I think it might be the size of my magnet down here. Or the way I'm actually rotating my pole around the sensor here. So I'll work on that a little bit. But you see that we went up by another 100 at 500. So let's uh, kick it up even more. I know you guys are wanting to know how fast it's going to go. This is a feed rate of 1,000. All right, so now we are up about 700 uh, milliamps. Uh, let's make it 1,500. And our, our platform starts to, we are, <laughs> uh, this is not very, not very balanced at all. So you can see why I have this thing strapped down. But at 1500, you can see that we're doing, we're doing that pretty fast. I'll go ahead and do that again. I won't talk this time. We're up to almost 900 milliamps over here on the current. We'll make it 2000. And I'll hold things way down a lot. All right, we, we were clearly beyond an amp here. This is 1.7 milliamps. So let's go ahead and click this over to the 10 amp scale. See where we end up going. All right, we're back on again. Okay, so now we are at 10, 10 amps full scale. So let's run that one again.
That ended up being about an amp and a quarter, or 1200 milliamps. So the Garbo board is configured so that this axis will only do 2500 um, of a feed rate of millimeters per minute. So 2500 will be our, our highest number that we can actually put here. All right, let's see how fast this thing runs. Okay, now you see that we're, we skipped some steps here. And this thing does have an alarm. Uh, it's got an alarm system to know that we've actually skipped steps. And I think what happened was we ended up, um, the Gerbil uh, was, couldn't run them that fast. So let's, take, let's kick that back down again. Or our acceleration rates are a little too fast or our deceleration rate is a little too fast. There's some issue there running this fast. And it, it's probably a Gerbil issue because we don't see an alarm up here. Um, if we can't step there, we will get an alarm and then this thing will shut down. And part of these other signals that are up on this connector let us know that we're in progress of making a move and we are, um, we are completed making a move that uh there's a lot there's a couple of pins up there that uh toggle when that happens and then there's an alarm alarm status there let's put this back down to 2350 2250 and we'll run it again here hold this down okay so it, you can see that our our speed is quite a lot. Now what I don't know is on this motor when it's running at speed, I don't have a sense of the torque. I suspect it will uh, maintain its torque at that rotation, but I, I don't have a way to actually measure that. I'd need a, something like a dynamometer or something uh, to actually check that out. But at low, re, low rotational rates, I pretty much uh, verified, well, our holding torque using this thing was easily 16 pounds. Okay, so let's, uh, let's kick this back down to something that doesn't vibrate my test stand apart. We'll let this thing run. I think it was a thousand that run, lets it run a little, little more. Okay, now that's about the speed I'd probably be running my coil winder, but I do have the capability of running it that much faster. Well, that's kind of wraps it up on this side. I'll go back and uh, talk a little bit about what's next on this project. Well, that's an impressive integrated step servo motor from JMC. It's three Newton meter torque is easily going to allow us to wind 16 gauge wire on the transformer coil. And if I want to get down to doing uh, guitar pickups with six to 8,000 turns, the rotational speed of that motor is going to allow that to happen in a short period of time. It's integrated electronics allow me to drive it directly from a microcontroller. And I don't need to worry about it missing steps. Um, the remaining large items for design on the coil winder are the control electronics as well as the display and uh, the user interface. I'll have future videos for that, um, hopefully by the end of the year. I'd like to get this done, but I do work on this in the evenings and I've learned a lot so far, uh, but I will continue to make videos and show you the progress of the coil winder. Then we'll get down to, do, then we'll take all this stuff and get down to using, doing uh, some real transformer design. Okay, well, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is the Valve Studio. If you like this, go ahead and hit subscribe. See you next time. We'll make it 2,000. And I'll hold things way down a lot. Alright, we, we were clearly beyond an amp here. This is 1.7.